Hello, and welcome to the Kathleen Spracklin Podcast. I am a woman on a mission to assemble a cadre of writers, thinkers, and teachers who are transforming the world one character at a time. And it all starts with one thing, a deep understanding of human motivation, why people do what they do, and the forces that drive them. To gain an understanding, I am mining the intersection of psychology, theology, and philosophy to make you a better writer. This is episode number 45, Name That Character Trait, Martha with Sylvia and her art quilt. Well, we're going to take kind of a fun break in the middle of our work to establish a taxonomy of character traits and a rule book by which you can narrow down a given character trait from a story. We've been assembling our stories and trying to work through them to name our character trait. Well, let's play a game tonight. I'm going to give you a scenario and see if you can name the character trait that is evidenced in that story. Sometimes there might be more than one, but usually there's one that's going to really dominate. Well, you've got a little bit of an easier time than it will be in the future because we've so far only talked about the resilience traits, which are the character against the external physical world, and the balance traits, which have to do with the character managing his own self. Well, since we haven't yet covered insider empathy, we know already that it's, the trait is going to either be in the resilience group or the balance group. Let me read you the story and then we'll take a look at the traits and see if you can spot the character trait that is evidenced in this scenario. The story fits on a 4 by 6 file card, as many great stories will. Martha's face lit up in excitement as Sylvia spread out her latest phenomenal art quilt on the conference room table. Martha marveled at her co-workers' complex creation and the intricacy of the stitching. Martha quilted too, so she could appreciate Sylvia's work. But where Martha's quilts went off to her grandchildren... Sylvia's quilt was headed for an art show in Singapore. Oh, Sylvia, Martha exclaimed, wouldn't it be fantastic if you got to go to all the places your quilts have been? Name the character trait. I'll let you think about it a little bit, but we're going to look back and forth between two sets. So it's really going to be pick it out from the list. You don't have to come totally from your head. So let's take a look at the two, the resilience group and the balance group that we've covered so far. Here are the traits from the balance group. We covered them in two groups, courage and power. And now I've got them combined on one sheet so you can look through them. If you think that this this scenario was about our character, Martha, battling the external physical world, you'd take a look at these sets of traits. You'd look at was courage needed or is power being obtained? Well, it's pretty clear, I think, we would agree that this isn't so much about the external physical world. So let's take a look at the other uh, group, the balance group. So here are the traits of the balance group. When we looked at them before, we looked at self-regulation individually, then attention, and then self-assessment. So balance group is about managing and assessing oneself. Hmm, rather interesting because empathy 
is about relationships and we've got two people in the picture, you might almost think you need an empathy trait, but we haven't done empathy yet, so it couldn't be. So it must be a balance trait. Which one? Pause the video and study the chart and see if you can determine which character trait is present in the scenario. Did you come up with a guess? Well, let's try to do it from the top down. Might be a little bit difficult to decide that you are coming in here based on managing and assessing oneself, but when you get used to the character traits, that won't be such a challenging ask. So we might look at the first group. Is it about self-regulation? Maintaining proportionality? Keeping self and surroundings tidy? Obeying one's own will? Hmm, maybe not. Is it about self-assessment? Facing one's history? Humility? Awareness of one's giftedness? Oh, we might be thinking humility. Hmm, Martha has a certain giftedness. She's a quilter. Shall we keep that one in the back of our minds as maybe one of the choices? How about attention? Giving attention or needing to receive attention? Meekness is about attention given to others. Modesty about attention sought for oneself. We certainly don't see Martha seeking attention for herself. She's all excited about Sylvia's quilt. Oh, there it is. Attention given to others. Meekness. Now, humility might well come into play here, but the predominant theme in this scenario is the attention that Martha is generously giving to Sylvia. Now, you might not think that meekness, if you think about it, the word in the dictionary definition that, gee, what does meekness have to do with attention? But it really is. All of it is essentially, at its core, about attention. Because meekness is being able to be calm and comfortable within your own skin so that you're free to give attention to other people without comparisons. Now, Martha made a, a mild comparison. She thought, oh, my quilts are going off to my grandchildren. Uh-huh, that's nice. Sylvia's are going off to Singapore. Wow, what an exciting de destination. She wasn't comparing, oh, my quilting is so, so, so sad and pathetic compared to Sylvia's. Then she wouldn't have been free to give Sylvia absolutely her attention with great joy because she was comfortable with herself and enjoyed her own quilting and was happy to send her quilts to her grandchildren. She was free and comfortable within herself to be able to give her attention to others. When our character is wrapped up in their own ego or their own insecurity, then everything they see outside of their those eyeballs are being contorted by a lens of evaluation. Does this reflect good on me or badly on me? How do I compare? Am I good enough? And, and what you see with meekness, when it truly rains, that distorting lens is just not there. And Martha can see clearly and joy and delight in Sylvia's quilts. I hope you enjoyed that little um, scenario. And we'll be doing that in between. But next, we'll go back to picking out another group. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.